Welcome to today's video on Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics 0607 and 0580. The topic for today is coordinate geometry, where we will be discussing the subtopic equation of a line. To begin with, we're going to have a look at parallel and perpendicular lines. When we have parallel lines, these are lines that you can extend and keep extending. And regardless of how much you extend them, they're not going to meet each other. So they will never intersect with each other. So these are lines that look like this here, that you can keep extending them, but they're never going to meet. Something that we can see about our parallel lines is that they seem to have the same slope. They seem to be oriented at the same angle. And what this means when we look at parallel lines on a Cartesian plane is that these lines are going to have gradients that are exactly the same. So for example, if my first line at the top had a gradient of 2, then the line at the bottom is also going to have a gradient of 2 there. And this can work the other way as well. Say I have lines that have the exact same gradient. Say I have a line with a gradient of negative 5 and also another line with a gradient of negative 5. Then knowing that they have the exact same gradient, I can come to the conclusion that these lines should be parallel to each other. Moving on, we're also going to talk about perpendicular lines. When we look at perpendicular lines, these are lines that are positioned at 90 degrees to each other. So between these lines, I have an angle of 90 degrees. And when I have lines that are perpendicular to each other, and if I look at their gradients, then the link that we would be able to find between their gradients is that if we multiply their gradients together, then it's always going to give us a value of negative 1. So we say that the product of the gradients of two perpendicular lines would always give us negative 1. So let's go ahead and look at an example that shows us um, how we can deal with these parallel and perpendicular line facts in questions. In this example, they've mentioned that the coordinates of four points A, B, P, and Q are negative 2, 0, 1, 9, 2, 5, and 6, 17, respectively. And it's asking us to show that the line AB is parallel to the line PQ. So this is my coordinate of A, B, P, and Q. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find out the gradient of my line AB. And to find the gradient of a line, what we have to do is we have to get the change in Y and divide it by the change in X. Or in other words, we are going to do Y2, take away Y1, and divide this by X2, take away X1. And you can see we've done that here. So we've done 0, take away 9, and divided that by negative 2, take away 1. So 0, take away 9 gives us negative 9. And negative 2 take away 1 gives us negative 3. And when we divide negative 9 by negative 3, we're going to get positive 3. Similarly, we're going to do the exact same thing to work out the gradient of PQ. In this case, it's going to be 17 take away 5 divided by 6 take away 2. And then we're going to get 12 divided by 4, which also gives us a positive 3 as the answer. And now, because the gradient of AB is the exact same, as the gradient of PQ, we can come to the conclusion that our line AB and our line PQ should be parallel to each other. We are going to prove that the lines AB and BC that are connected to each other are also perpendicular to each other. A has the coordinates negative 6, 6, B is negative 8, negative 3, and C is 1, negative 5. To begin with, we're going to go ahead and work out the gradient of AB. And to do this, we're going to do Y2, take away Y1, divided by X2, take away X1, like before. And this is going to give us the answer 9 over 2. Then we're going to similarly do this same thing and work out the gradient of BC here. And then we're going to get the answer of negative 2 
overnight. To prove that these two lines are perpendicular to each other, we're going to go ahead and work out the product of their gradient. And working out the product would mean that we have to multiply 9 over 2 and negative 2 over 9 by themselves. And when we do that, we're going to get negative 1 as the answer. And because we get negative 1, we can prove that these two lines should be perpendicular to each other. And we can say that the lines AB and BC form a right angle between them. Moving on to finding out the equations of straight lines, when we go ahead and try to find out the equation of a straight line, one of the most important thing that we would have to do is work out the gradient of a line. To work out the gradient, we always need to do the change in y and then divide this by the change in x. And when we get the gradient of a line, we would usually denote this using the symbol m. So if you see the letter m, then this stands for the gradient of a line. Now, in some questions, we might be given the gradient. And if we are given the gradient, then what we can do is we can go ahead and rearrange the equation and use this to find out an unknown coordinate um, if necessary. And when we do use this equation, it's really important for us to also remember that we can use this to find the equations of straight lines that are not parallel to our y-axis. So these are lines that are not vertical. The next concept that we need to discuss is how we can work out the y-intercept of a straight line. Now, the y-intercept is the next part of the equation that we would need um, to work out the entire equation of a straight line. And this is usually denoted by the symbol c. So you would see this being represented with a lowercase c. Now, the y-intercept is exactly what this says. It is where the line is intersecting with our y-axis. And this would always have an x-coordinate of 0 because this point would lie on your y-axis. So it's always going to end up with an x-coordinate of 0. And when we put the gradient and the intercept, or in specific, the y-intercept of our line together, what we would be able to do is we would be able to form the general equation for any straight line. And the general equation for any straight line is represented by y is equals to mx plus c. And like we mentioned before, m is the gradient of our line and c is the y-intercept. Now, the variables y and x can take many values and this would keep changing depending on the exact position that you are looking on your straight line m and c would remain constants. We can also have the general equation of the straight line being written as ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. And this is an alternative format of writing the equation of a straight line instead of writing y is equal to mx plus c. Now in this format, if our value of a is zero, this would mean that the line is parallel to the x axis. And in this case, this would give us equations that look like y is equal to 5 or y is equal to negative 2. And then in these equations, we can see that we do not have an x term because our value of a is 0. And these are giving us lines that would be parallel to the x axis. On the other hand, if our value of b was 0 instead, then this would give us lines that are parallel to the y axis. So, for example, this would give us lines that look like x equals to 5 or x is equals to negative 3. Then these lines would be parallel to our y-axis. And then finally, if our value of c is 0, then this means that our straight line is passing through the origin of our coordinate axis. And the origin is basically the coordinate 0, 0, um, which is where your x-axis and your y-axis intersect with each other. So this general equation can be used to derive all types of straight line graphs with the gradient of negative a over b in the condition where b 
is not equals to zero. And that's it for today's video. Um, thank you.